Hello kids, let's start with the first chapter of science that is stars and our solar system. So kids, let's understand solar system in detail. So kids, let's start with this beautiful chapter and let's understand what are the different components of our solar system. The first component of our solar system is sun. The next one that we have in our solar system is moon. Then we have the eight planets. These are the eight planets in our solar system. The next is this asteroid belt that you can see. After that, we have meteors, then we have comets, and finally we have stars twinkling. So these are the different components of our solar system. These components, they are called as celestial or heavenly bodies of the solar system. So remember, these are the heavenly bodies in our solar system. Let's understand each one of them in detail in this chapter. Now kids, let's start with the moon. First, if you consider Earth, we all know that moon is the natural satellite of Earth. And you know what? It is also the heavenly body that is nearest to the Earth. The distance between the moon and the Earth, it is 3,84,400 kilometer. So that is the distance between moon and Earth. Now kids, let's understand moon in detail. Do you all know kids that Earth and moon doesn't produce its own light? Now the question arises, then how does it illuminate? That is because of sun. We all know that the sun is the ultimate source of energy. Light from the sun, when it hits the Earth, that side of the Earth which is facing the sun, it experiences day. And obviously the other side will experience night. Similarly kids, when light from the sun hits the moon, the side that is facing the sun, it will get illuminated, it will get light up and that side is visible to us. Now, then what happens is this light gets reflected and reaches the earth and we can see that side of the moon. So always remember we can only see one side of the moon. The back side of the moon is never visible because light only falls on that side. That is the front side of the moon. Because moon is spherical in shape. That's the reason why we can see only one side of the moon. Now let's understand, if we can see one side of the moon, then the question arises, why does the moon sometime appears full and sometime it appears half? Let's understand this by understanding more about phases of moon. That are what are the different shapes of moon. Starting with the first one. That is, we all know that this is sun, the earth, and now we have the moon. Let's consider the moon. We have already studied that we can only see one side of the moon, right? So we have only considered one side of the moon. Now, if you are observing from the earth, at day one, what will happen is, let's assume that the moon is completely visible to us. When the moon is completely visible to us from the earth, we say it is a full moon day. And this is how a full moon appears. This is the actual picture of a full moon. Now, kids, here the moon is fully visible, so it's a full moon day. Now, what happens? As you go up, Later on, the size goes on decreasing. When the size goes on decreasing, kids, it's called as waning. And this shape of the moon that you can see here, it's called as a gibbous moon. So now the size has decreased a little bit. Later on again, it will decrease further. And now you can see exactly half moon. Here, this moon is called as half moon. Or we can also call it as quarter moon. So they are called as a half moon or a quarter moon. Now what will happen? So it's going on decreasing. So here we call this moon as waning moon. Now again the size will decrease further. Now I can just see a small C shape out of it, right? And this moon, students, it's called as a crescent moon. Later on what happens is now at one stage, what you will notice is when we cannot see the moon at all, that moon is called as a new moon day. And this is how it appears. You can't see the moon, okay? Not visible to us. So that is a new moon day. Later on, let's see what happens. Again, now after the new moon, that is the 15th day, it again goes on increasing. Now we'll call it as again the crescent moon, but now we'll not call it as a waning moon. We'll call it as waxing moon. Let's understand waxing moon in detail. So here you can see, you can see a small part. This is a crescent moon. Later on, let's see what happens. Now again, I can see half moon. That is called as a quarter moon or half moon. Again, but a waxing moon, okay? It's going on increasing. Now, the next shape obviously will be what? It will be a gibbous moon, right? But here, the moon is 70% visible to us and this is a waxing gibbous moon. Again, finally, we have the full moon ready. So that is how on day 29th, again, we have a full moon. 
basically it is not exactly 29 days it takes more than 29 days that is how we have one month so they are the different phases of moon first it goes on waning 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 finally it is a new moon again it's waxing 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 it goes on increasing in size and finally we have a full moon again so that is the different phases of moon let's understand this better by making a calendar out of it now here i have a calendar let's understand the calendar in detail okay kids here you can see that day one it is a full moon now the moon will keep on decreasing in size right so let's understand this here you can see the size of the moon is going on decreasing so now it will become thinner and thinner that is it's waning now where will it stop that is on day 15 right day 15th you cannot see the moon and what is it called it is called as a new moon day because we can't see the moon a new moon will begin right later on it will again go on increasing that is it will wax so it's waxing of moon again the size goes on increasing it becomes larger and larger day by day and finally on day 29th what you see is an entire moon none other than it is called as a full moon so that is how it takes approximately more than 29 days that is why it is one month so the time period between one full moon day to the next full moon is one month or a month and this is called as phases of moon the period from one new moon day to the next new moon day is 29.5 days remember this, this is a very important filler next comes what is phases of moon the definition of phases of moon is the different shapes of the moon that we see as it waxes and wanes is called as phases of moon now kids let's continue we'll move ahead and we'll understand we never see the back side of the moon as we have already discussed let's understand why you can't see the back side of the moon for that we'll consider the earth and i have moon here we'll consider the orbit of the moon now when the moon will revolve it will also rotate remember when the moon revolves around the earth it is also going to rotate around itself let's see what happens if i consider a pointer now the pointer the arrowhead remember it's facing towards the earth and when it is revolving around the earth what you will notice is the arrowhead will always point towards the earth that is the reason why you can only see one side of the moon let's see here what i want you all to do is i want you all to observe this revolution and also above you can see rotation okay so observe that when the moon is going to revolve around the earth it's also rotating around its own axis right but only the head is pointing towards the earth that's the reason kids why you can only see one side of the moon so let's understand this in detail so the question arises what do you observe as the moon revolves around the earth what we observe we observe two things as it completes one revolution around the earth it also completes one complete rotation about its axis and that is why we only see one side of the moon and we never see the back side of the moon so that's about moon